Hello, this is Villa Braves and welcome to the next episode of the Leeds United 5-16 career mode. So today Leeds host Southend United, knowing that victory ensures their safety. Even if they lose today, defeat for Huddersfield Town away at Queen's Park Rangers would also ensure their safety. So a big day for Leeds United. South End will get us underway. And well, there's a good ball through by Caballero. And Cook gets in there. And Leeds have the lead in the fourth minute. Perfect start for Leeds United. Caballero did well, beat a couple of players, played a death little ball there and I don't know whether that was a mishit shot or an intentional slice, but Cook doesn't care because it ended up in the back of the net. And Leeds United have the perfect start and take the lead in the fourth minute. Coke is in the area here, and Sylvester does well. He's just searching long crossfield pass and finds Atkinson, and there's a first time shot from Hunt, but that's way wide of the target. Lead now looking to break as we approach the end of the first half. Three minutes of added on time, and Irwin's into the penalty area, but. South End get it away. Time running out now at the end of the first half. South End look to build one more attack. And there goes the whistle for half time. So Leeds have the lead. Cooks goal in the fourth minute. Whether he meant that shot or not, or whether it was a complete miss hit, only he will know. But Leeds lead South End United by one goal to nil at half time. So, welcome back as Leeds get the second half underway. South End will get that clear. And Rios all on his own. Puts it to Leonard, and well, there's a good ball now. Moose is in, and that's over the bar. Now Irwin, edge of the area, fires a shot in, but misses the post. Picks it up now, Leonard. There's a good ball now, and Payne. And Moose is in. Oh, that's a great save by Silvestri. Drop in now, building up some pressure. Crosses in. Oh, and that's just past the post from Prother. Leeds living dangerously. That's inches wide. And Wood finds Phillips, and Phillips is in there. Oh, and he's put it wide. Went for the glory. Should have scored there, Phillips. Put it wide to the near post. 
Cook. Wood. Cook wants it back. Cook gets it back and he's brought down. That's a free kick on the edge of the area. And Lewis Cook not happy with that challenge. It's going to be a free kick right on the edge of the area. And Gardner has gone off, so Trousterson gets to take the free kick. Goes to the near post and not too far away, but looked like the keeper had it covered. As we move into the three minutes of added time at the end of the game, Leeds close to knowing that they're mathematically safe from relegation. Has the whole half to run into. Checks back. Phillips. Oh, and Phillips loses the ball, but is there time for Southend to make one last attack? There's a long, hopeful ball. And Rios now is into the area. Slips it. To, oh, that's a great save from Silvestri. And there goes the final whistle. Leeds United have won and are mathematically safe from relegation. Wonderful result for Leeds. A big day for them. So Lewis Cook's goal in the fourth minute. The difference between the sides. And you can see what he thinks about that. So it's all over at Ellen Road. It's Leeds United 1, South End United 0. So a quick look at the match facts. Leeds having two more shots than South End, both having five on target. And we'll take a look at the league table now just to confirm Leeds safe from relegation. So we see with that win, Leeds is up to 17th now. Uh, 49 points. So Huddersfield losing 3-1 at Queen's Park Rangers. Um, all but confirms that they will join Preston and Rotherham in League One next season. So, following the, the victory against South End, which ensured uh, safety, um, I decided with the last two games that I would just go ahead and, and sim those um, and get to the end of the season um, to see. Because I, I, I think it's pretty inevitable, I think I'm going to get fired, so we'll see what happens. Um, but anyway, just to show you the last two games, uh, we played Rotherham away, uh, we drew 2-2. Two -two. And then the last game of the season was away at Birmingham, uh, where we lost two goals to one. So I've simmed all the way through to um, the 27th of June. Um, I still have players, a few players out of um, contract. Um, Bamba Cook refused his contract originally. Mowit, which I, I didn't, I was looking to sell him anyway. Sloth had already said he's departing. Um, Turnbull, I mean, I'd hope he would stay. Bianchi is departing the club as well. Um, I did manage to, with the money that I did have left at the end of the season, I was able to secure Charlie Taylor, the left back, for four years, and um, Phillips, uh, the midfielder, who I haven't played a great deal, but I think he may be an asset. Um, I got him for another four years as well. So that's where we um, we got with that. Um, if we take a look at the final standings in the league table, so the three teams that were relegated from uh, the Premier League last season, Watford, West Brom and Bournemouth, finished in first, second and third, but we don't know, I don't know, haven't looked yet to see who won the playoff. Um, so in the playoffs you had Bournemouth, Sheffield, Wednesday, Middlesbrough and Queen's Park Rangers. Down at the bottom, um, Rotherham, Preston, Huddersfield all relegated. Leeds final place uh, was in 19th, which is obviously not good enough. Um, 50 points from 46 games. Um, I mean, they're 
Queen's Park Rangers. They're, they're 28 points behind the, the last playoff spot, which is a huge, huge difference. Um, so, uh, we'll look at the, the team stats for Leeds. So, just sort this out. So, as we see, Caballero scored 17 goals in the championship Leo win seven Chris Wood five I mean that, that those returns from Leo Irwin and Chris Wood um, you know 12 goals between them in a in a total of 49 go games played is is just not good enough um, I mean Caballero there is averaging a goal every other game um, if the other two could have managed the same thing then um, you know we might not have been fighting off relegation uh, for most of the season. Um, so we'll look at uh, the league tables for all of the English leagues. So we see Chelsea won the Premier League title, Manchester City second, Arsenal third, Liverpool fourth. Relegated, uh, Ipswich, Nottingham Forest and Hull City, uh, the three teams that were promoted, so um, no surprises there. Ipswich only won one game all that season. Um, so we've seen the championship table, so promoted for definite from League One are Brentford and Bolton, two sides who went down. Um, the playoffs were Coventry, Millwall, Lake Norrington and Notts County, so we're not sure who won that one. Uh, relegated is going to be Fleetwood Town, Doncaster and Gillingham. Or possibly Burton Albion as well, I think it's four from uh, League One. And League Two, uh, Plymouth, Oxford, Oldham will be promoted and then Cambridge, Scunthorpe, Bristol Rovers and Rochdale were in the playoffs. And finishing rock bottom of League Two was Crawley Town. Uh, York City finishing in 23rd. So moving on to the uh, the Cups. Um, West Ham United beat Manchester City 5-4 on penalties in the FA Cup final. So West Ham FA Cup winners. In the Capital One Cup, Swansea City defeated Everton in the final by a score of goal, two goals to one. So we see that Sheffield Wednesday actually won the playoffs, uh, beating Queen's Park Rangers in the final. So look at the top scorers for the championship for this season. We see Caballero is fifth on the list there for Leeds, 17 goals. But Callum Wilson of Bournemouth scoring 26 goals. Amrabat of Watford, 21. Ross McCormack of Wolves, 18. And... Junior Hoyle at Queen's Park Rangers also on 17 with Caballero. Um, assist leaders, uh, McLean, McLean of West Brom. And Callum Wilson again up there with 10 assists as well. So what a season he had. Okay, so just going to advance now through to the uh, end of the season. And we'll see what happens here. Okay, so as I suspected um, with that poor performance all season, um, as you can see, the Leeds board have decided that that's it. So uh, my contract has been terminated. So season three, I think I'm going to advance this and uh, see what jobs are on offer um, so join me uh, shortly as I'll, I'll go offline now for this and, and advance and see what happens okay so I've advanced through now uh, just to see what job offers are available so here are the offers so we have Blackburn Rovers 
um, objective to finish mid-table. They finished in 21st position in the season just gone, so not uh, too exciting. Um, then we have Peterborough in the League One. Objective of gain automatic promotion. They finished in 11th this current season. Then we have Berry Football League One. Objective gain automatic promotion. They finished 10th. Ah, Portsmouth. Okay, Portsmouth. That's interesting. Okay, gain automatic promotion. They're in League One. They finished 7th. So, just looking at that, Portsmouth would interest me. Um, being ex-Royal Navy, spent a lot of time in Portsmouth, so I'm pretty familiar with Fratton Park. So, that, yeah, that certainly interests me. Um, okay, Russian League, I'm not going there. Okay, we're into the Dutch League now, so objective for De Graf Schap is how I think how you say it. Um, finish mid table, they finish 17th. I'm trying to think in the Dutch League, I think there's only. I don't know whether it's 20 teams in that league. Uh, Camber, never heard of them. Finish mid-table. Excelsior. Again. Okay, so those are the choices. So I think it's going to have to be Portsmouth. You know, I'm familiar with Fratton Park. I think uh, that's the one that most catches my eye. So we're going to take the Portsmouth job. So that will be the next season. So I'll uh, end this here and uh, join me for the start of the new season as we head to Fratton Park on the south coast to see if we can get Portsmouth promoted from League One up to the championship so this is Vela Braves and this will be the end of this episode and this season